Hello, I'm Jason from Senior Tech, a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching seniors technology and providing tips uh, for seniors. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a question I get a lot from seniors, uh, and that's should I switch to a Mac? Um, so I have uh, a lot of seniors that come to me and say, my family uses Macs, they say Macs are better than PCs. Should I switch? Um, will that be the best decision for me? So there's not an easy answer to that. So today I wanna break down a few of the uh, questions and details that will help you make that decision. So uh, I wanna start off by uh, looking at why um, somebody might go to a Mac and the advantages of a Mac over a PC. Um, and, and really the factors that a lot of people use that, that push them towards Mac. Then I'm going to go uh, in the advantages of PC, and then I want to go through a few details that are going to help you make that decision and, and find the right answer for you specifically, because it's not the same answer for everybody. First of all, um, I just want to say I'm a PC user. I have used Macs. I'm familiar with Macs. Um, but this is really the top few reasons why I think uh, seniors typically will go towards Macs and the advantages they see. Um, the number one uh, advantage of a Mac is really just the overall experience. So uh, Apple develops Macs uh, from the hardware level, from the software level. Everything that goes into it is made by Apple. This isn't the case when you get a PC. So when you get a PC, um, your PC is going to come from a major PC manufacturer, typically somebody like Dell or HP or Lenovo are, are three of the big main PC manufacturers. Uh, Mac computers, the only company that makes them is Apple. So they design the hardware uh, all the way down to the chips that go into them in, in many cases. Uh, but they also design the software. So your Dell PC, your HPC, HP PC, your Lenovo PC, those run on a Windows operating system designed by Microsoft. Um, now, Microsoft does have something similar, so their Surface line of devices are hardware designed by Microsoft and software de de designed by Microsoft, so those will be similar to Macs. Um, but really, because Apple controls the software, they control the, ho the hardware, they control the overall experience. So when you buy a Mac and you turn it on, everything from day one to day 100 is really set in place by, by Apple. Um, the other piece that they have, um, because they design all the hardware, the design the software is the quality control. So they really can dictate, um, you know, and optimize all of the hardware around what they want the experience to feel like. So that means everything from screen, the screen they choose, you'll, you'll see a lot of times they talk about a retina display, which means a really high resolution screen, uh, the chassis. So they use aluminum a lot of times in their manufacturing. So it feels very high quality. Um, whereas PC manufacturers, um, you know, they can put parts out to bid, so the, the actual circuit boards can go out to bid between several different companies. Uh, they farm a lot of that out. The operating system, again, Microsoft makes it, so they don't really have control over the end-to-end -end process. Uh, and depending on where their suppliers are and, and what's on the market as far as the hardware, um, they generally don't have the ability to, you know, spe specify end to end what that hardware and what that quality is going to look like. Another big factor uh, that people choose Mac for is the ecosystem. So if you already have an iPhone, if you already have an iPad, uh, getting a Mac computer is going to be a really great experience. It makes it easy to move files between um, your phone and your computer. In fact, if you take a picture and you use iCloud, it's just going to show right up on your Mac. That's a little harder to do with a PC. Um, if you um, use their music services, it's across all of them. Uh, even to the point of if you know you get a call or a text message on your iPhone, um, you can take that on anything in Mac's ecosystem. So your text messages will pop up on your Mac computer even if you don't have your phone out. Everything works seamlessly together. So if you're already an Apple user for your phone or your tablet, uh, a Mac is a good choice. Uh, another big factor that people uh, choose Max for is is the ease of purchase. So uh, there's not a ton of options with Max. Um, you know, as far as uh, traditional desktops go, you have your Mac Mini, you have your iMac. Um, there's an iMac Pro. Um, and then there's a Mac Pro, but that's typically only for, uh, you know, 
commercial use or somebody who makes videos for a living. So really, you're, you're on the desktop side, you're down to the iMac or the Mac Mini. And on the laptop side, you're um, with the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, um, just a couple of options there as well. So it's not as overwhelming when you're looking for a Mac. You can go to an Apple store, you can talk to the experts, uh, and the, the purchase experience is, is really good with, with Mac computers. Um, and lastly, the, the, um, I would say one of the biggest factors that drives people to Macs is malware. So if you've ever been on a PC and you've gotten a virus, you've gotten some sort of infection, it can be really hard to get rid of. Now that's not to say Macs are immune to malware. It doesn't mean that they won't get malware. It just means that um, it's less likely. There's less malware out there designed for it. Uh, again, less people use Mac computers. They're not targeted as, as much. So it's not as much of a problem as what you're going to see in PC. Um, and even these days in PC, um, the, the built-in protection in Windows is better for, for malware. So it's not as big of an issue, but I would say it's a lot less of a concern if you use a Mac. So somebody who's had a bad infection, who's had you know, their PC hijacked or taken over, um, is going to be more likely to look at a Mac. So I would say those are the big factors. Um, we'll get into a few more details that'll help you uh, make your decision a little farther on. But the other um, side of the coin is the PC. Why would I stay with a PC if I've uh, if Mac has all these advantages? Uh, and really, the the biggest advantage of PC uh, is is two areas. So number one is going to be familiarity. Um, if you've used a PC for years, uh, PC is going to be easier. And actually, I am plan on doing a video uh, later that's going to um, show the differences between uh, Mac operating system and Windows. And, you know, if you're new to a Mac operating system, what areas you're going to have to get adjusted to because it is a completely different experience. So even if you're coming from an older version of Windows to Windows 10, um, it's going to be familiar. You know where the start menu is. You know how to maximize a window. You know what your web browser looks like. Whereas switching to a Mac is going to be a totally different experience. You can certainly learn it. You can certainly get over it. Um, but if you're not that comfortable using a computer to begin with, switching to a Mac is going to be relearning what you already know. Um, the other big factor that a lot of people uh, go to PC for is options. So, um, you know, we talked about Apple's the only one that makes a Mac computer, and that's a good thing. But the really good thing on the PC side is there's competition. Um, so there's so many different form factors, meaning so many different sizes and shapes of computers, uh, so many different models out there. You have an endless number of options. If you want a small laptop, you can get a small laptop built for gaming. You can get a small laptop built for business. You can get a small laptop that has a really nice screen. If you don't care about screen, you can get a small laptop that's really affordable. Uh, same thing on desktops. Do you want a tower? Do you want everything integrated into the monitor? Do you want, uh, you know, something from Lenovo, something from Dell. Um, so there's really an endless number of options. And while that makes the buying experience a little harder, um, you also at the same time have flexibility to get closer to your ideal uh, piece of equipment because there are so many different options with PC. Uh, even in laptops, there's some laptops that rival the finish of, of a Mac laptop. So um, Dell has their XPS line, which is uh, an incredible laptop, and it's really sleek. Um, and it goes toe to toe with the best that Apple has to offer. That's that's another um, you know great product out on the market. Um, in addition to familiarity um, with with Windows and the options, uh, there's there's two other factors that that I think help out um, compatibility. And this is less of an issue as it used to be before. So if you've had software that you've used for years, chances are that's going to run on a Windows PC. You may or may not have a version that's going to work for Apple. Um, peripheral devices, so things like cameras, like the camera I'm recording on, most of those will work just fine with Mac, um, but you do have to do your research because not everything is designed to work both with Mac and PC. If they did choose one, however, it's going to be compatible with PC. Um, same things with uh, programs. If you've had a program you've used for you know 20 years, chances are you can probably get it to run on a PC. You're not going to have as much luck with a Mac or it's going to be more complicated in how you can get that to work on a Mac. 
Uh, so compatibility is still a factor. Um, everything is still geared towards PCs. While most things do have Apple compatibility, something you do have to watch out for. And the other factor, which, which some will debate, is price. Um, so because the PC market is competitive, you do have companies that are competing with each other to get better pricing. Apple's kind of off on their own. While they do um, have some cost comparisons between them and PC, they do typically run on the higher side uh, as far as price goes. People call it the Apple tax. So when you buy an Apple, you have to pay the Apple tax, which means you're paying a higher price than you might for, for a comparable uh, computer um, on the PC side. So those are really the advantages of both the PCs and the Macs, and, and there's a lot, so you might say, how do I make my decision? What do I choose uh, to, to, what's a bigger factor? Should I care more about the experience? Should I care more about familiarity? What's, what's my deciding factor? This doesn't help anything. So um, that's where it really gets down to your um, personal preference. And so I wanna talk uh, about a few factors that, that ultimately should be what you use um, to uh, make your decision, as well as a few factors that are kinda in the gray area that some people may say lean more one towards the other. Uh, first of all, as far as those gray area items, uh, reliability is something that people throw out there a lot of times with Macs, and they say, Macs just work. Uh, as somebody who supports technology and who has troubleshot both sides of equipment, I can say there's opportunities for challenges um, with both PCs and Macs. I've seen Macs die. Uh, at the end of the day, Macs are running right now, it's soon going to change, but they're running Intel processors, which means they're running the same processors Windows computers are running. They have the same hard drives that's in a Windows computer or the same solid state drive in a Windows computer. So at the core, they're still computers, they're still prone to the same types of hardware failures. If you look at the overall failure rate, Macs don't necessarily perform better than some of the top PC brands. And you have to remember, um, PC brands, they have more value-oriented options that might have lower end parts. So if you spend a little more in a PC, uh, hopefully you're going to get something uh, a little more reliable that might even exceed uh, Mac on a reliability. As far as uh, software goes, um, both are prone to software issues. I've seen programs not run on a Mac. I've seen programs not run on a PC. Um, we did talk about malware. I would say Mac definitely gets the advantage to that. Um, but Windows 10 is actually a, a fairly um, developed operating system at this point. It's been out for a while. It's pretty stable these days. So I, I, I don't really give anybody the reliability lead. Um, I, I, you can run into trouble on both types of computers or you can have them for years and not have any issues. It really just gets down to what you're doing with it, your comfort level of troubleshooting them and um, you know the, the certain set of circumstances you're using your computer in. Uh, the other one is ease of use, and, and this is the, the highly debatable one I think that people throw out a lot. Everybody throws out, Macs are easy to use. Well, Macs are easy to use if you know how to use a Mac. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's what you're comfortable with. And, and that's where I'm getting back to um, PC is ease of use if you're already using a PC. So people that use Macs and say they're so easy to use, that's because they've learned it. That's because they've adapted to it. So ease of use is not really a big factor that I would push people towards one system versus the other. Um, but I, I feel like um, what you know is probably the easiest to use. So switching between Mac and PC for anybody is going to cause some frustration and it's going to cause some challenges. So if that's not something you're looking to do, then I wouldn't make the switch either way. If you're already using a Mac, you're comfortable with it and you don't want to learn something new, don't switch to a PC and vice versa. If you're the type that likes to play with technology, wants a new adventure, then switching to a Mac is a great experience. And, and as a PC user, you know, when I use a Mac, it's, it's even fun to explore and learn all the different ways. Not everybody is out for that. Some people just want their computer to work, just want to check their email. And in that case, whatever you're familiar with is going to be the easiest to use for you. So now I want to get to the two factors that, that um, really are, are going to be the drivers um, for, for your decision. And, uh, you know, I, I had just talked about one, um, and, and I just want to emphasize, are you willing to learn something new? 
Um, and especially if you're a senior, especially if um, you know you're an active senior and you have a lot of things going on, um, you know your willingness to learn something new is going to be a deciding factor on whether or not you want to change. If you know any new computer is going to require some adapta adaptation, especially if you're going from an older computer to a newer one. But really, do you want to take that on? And the number one most important factor is your support. Who's going to help you when things go bump in the night? Um, who is there to answer your questions? Um, and I look at this in a lot of different ways. So um, there are a lot of businesses out there. There's a lot of one-off individual people out there who support PCs. So there's really a good support network um, from, from a business standpoint. Um, but at the same time, Apple has dedicated Apple stores. They have uh, geniuses are, are the people that they train. That's their word, not mine, uh, to support Mac computers. So they have a really good support network out there. They have classes in their stores. Um, they have uh, good education pieces out there. Um, so, so they have um, a lot of built-in support if you're near one of their stores, if you're able to get out, if you're wanting to go uh, into a store to learn all that, they have good infrastructure. If you have somebody that supported your PC for years and they're the ones that you go to when you have questions, um, if you value their help, um, understand, can they support a Mac in the same way? Because if they can't, well, now you're going to be looking at a new resource for, for support. Family members, uh, if you have grandkids that use Macs and they're over a lot and you have the ability to ask questions of them, that's a big deciding factor. They're not necessarily going to be able to help you with a PC, um, but if they want to show you how to use a Mac, take advantage of that. Learn something new. Um, if you have neighbors that are PC users um, and they're not Mac users, well, then maybe you want to stay with a PC. Really understand what that support network looks like before you go into making a purchase because that's going to be your long-term help. Um, if you live in a senior community and they offer some sort of tech support with the staff, is that tech support more comfortable um, supporting Macs or PCs? Um, again, that support network is going to control your ability to learn, your ability to experience new things. You can buy all the books you want. You can do all the videos online you want about how to do things. But at the end of the day, um, people are really the best means for support, especially when the computer's not behaving right. So um, I would say those are, those are really the deciding factors for you. There's not a right answer. There's not a wrong answer. Um, both PCs and Macs these days are really good options. Now, if you're looking at smartphones or tablets, um, that's a different discussion. So, uh, you know, that's probably a different video, um, and we'll save that for another day. Um, but I do plan on going in uh, and making a video uh, as far as what to learn on a Mac if you're a PC user and what's going to throw you off when you first sit down and use a Mac. So um, if you are looking at making the switch, stay tuned. That's going to be a great video for you because we're going to cover a lot of the differences between Mac and PC from an experience side. Uh, and you can kind of see how the operating system is different. So thank you all. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.